Hey everyone, welcome to part 2 of episode 1 on how to train your Iron Man account. If you haven't watched part 1 already, then go ahead and do so because I'm going through how to train every single one of your stats on an Iron Man account. And most of the skills have been mentioned in part 1, so go ahead and check that out if you haven't already. Now let's talk a little bit about ranged. To start off, you should use the charge bow you received during the blood pack quest, as this will save money on arrows for now. You won't really need armor at this point, so feel free to train naked until you have higher levels. The first monster you'll want to kill will be chickens to start with, and then you can move on to cows at around level 10 if you'd like, as they might give slightly more XP, but chickens go down pretty darn quick and give pretty good XP as it is, so you can go ahead and test this out for yourself and use your own personal preference. At level 20, you can go ahead and buy a willow bow from the Varrock shop or fletch it yourself, but you'll want to buy steel arrows from the Varrock archery shop for increased damage, which translates into more experience per hour. Be sure to pick yourself up some studded leather armor at the same time as well. At this level, you'll want to be killing dark wizards, which can be found just east of the Varrock lodestone, or you can kill spell wisps northwest of the Draenor wizard's tower, although I'd recommend to kill the dark wizards instead, as you'll find yourself killing out the spell wisps before they have a chance to spawn back. You might want to kill both, however, seeing as the dark wizards have a decent chance at dropping fire talismans, and spell wisps have an uncommon chance to drop water talismans, which you can use for runecrafting later on. Once you reach a level 15 slayer and 30 range, you should upgrade to a maple bow which can be fletched by yourself or obtained in the Varrock archery shop. If you have 35 crafting, you can craft yourself full carapace armor if you'd like, though you will still do just fine with studded leather armor. You may buy mithril bows at this time if you'd like, however you'll be obtaining these as fairly common drops from banshees, which is what you'll be killing next. So head on over to Canifus, Trade Moxina so that you can pick yourself up a pair of earmuffs, then head on over to the Canifus Slayer Tower, and pick yourself up a Slayer contract for as many Banshees as one contract will allow. Then go ahead and kill as many Banshees as you can. They drop quite a lot of herbs, and some seeds as well, so you're going to be wanting to bank quite often, so unlocking the Canifus Lodestone is going to come really in handy at this point. Don't forget to buy those earmuffs from a Slayer Master as well before doing so, or risk having your stats being drained and not being able to kill the Banshees effectively at all. Now we're going to get into some melee, and Slayer. The first thing you should do when you wish to train melee is to complete the waterfall quest. It is a simple quest that shouldn't take you long at all. You can look up a video guide on YouTube if you don't know how to complete this quest, but this will take you straight from 1 to 30 attack and strength. I'd recommend completing the Lumbridge Combat Academy for experience books, which you can use to bring you up to 40 attack right away. That way you can buy an adamant two-handed sword from the Birthorp right away and have a good start on training combat. Otherwise you can just use the experience books and other skills you find more difficult to train, such as Herblore or something else you might find to be tedious. As soon as you can, grab a Slayer task from the Slayer Master in Birthwarp. You will need Spite Gauntlets which you can buy from him in order to complete your first task which should be Gelatinous Abominations. But after this, Slayer will become an easy skill to train both Slayer and your melee skills. It is also possible to use other methods of combat to train Slayer, however, melee might be your best bet at this low of a level. Whenever your defense level is applicable, you can go ahead and upgrade your armor by buying Plate Legs in the Varrock Armor Shop near the Eastern Bank. Plate Legs can be found at Louis Legs, east and slightly south of the Alcarid Lodestone, and helmets can be bought in the Helmet Shop in Barbarian Village. You may kill Ankus in the Stronghold of Security for a fairly common drop chance at Mithril Plate Bodies. I received an Adamant Plate Body from a Medium Clue Scroll, but if your magic is high enough, around 40 to 60, you can go ahead and camp some Calphite Guardians in the Calphite Cave to try to obtain yourself a Rune Medium Helm, Chain Body, and Rune Two-Handed Sword. You can obtain Rune Chest Plates from here as well, though don't count on it. You'll also need to have completed the quest Dragon Slayer in order to equip the Rune Plate Body. You can train on Moss giants in the chaos tunnels at around level 40 or higher in your melee skills if you just wish to grind out your melee, but I recommend to train Slayer along with melee. Always use the best Slayer Master available to you, and if Vanica or somebody else gives you green dragons, you can go ahead and use your magic skill on them if your magic level is high enough using the magic method I mentioned earlier if you have not trained your range level very high. Green dragons are very easy to kill using magic at level 60 plus and you won't need much food to kill them per inventory. Around 7 cooked salmon should do the trick to be honest. Remember to save and bank their bones. To use on a bond fire with a cremation ability earned from the 2014 Halloween event for the most experience returned from them. Also bank their hides for crafting experience and alk money later on. Now three skills that absolutely go hand in hand are Slayer, Farming, and Herblore. Why is this you ask? Well, most Slayer creatures drop a wide variety of herbs and herb seeds which will be used to farm your own herbs and create potions while doing so. To start, you want to complete the Druidic Ritual Quest, which will take you no more than 5 minutes, 10 minutes at the max, and give you a nice head start on the Herblore skill, as well as giving you some free Guams and Eyes of Newt to continue your free Herblore boost. 
I won't tell you exactly what potions to make, but you should always make the best potions available to you. Stockpile as many herbs as you can from farming in Slayer or Combat, and every day or two, go ahead and turn them all into potions for a quick profit. You can check whichever potions are best to use by going into your skills tab, clicking on the herb lore icon, and then filtering it by going into where it says milestones, go ahead and click potions, and then you can just go ahead and click on whichever potions are there, and it'll tell you what the ingredients are. You can go ahead and check out the RuneScape wiki if you need to know where you can find these supplies. Summoning is another skill that might take you a little while, but to start it you should go ahead and start the Wolf Whistle quest as soon as you can. It's a short 5 minute quest that will give you plenty of starting gold charms and boost you straight to level 4 summoning. Using the raw chickens you obtained earlier, go ahead and buy some spirit shards from the summoning trainer in Taverly along with some pouches. Withdraw from your bank all of your gold charms, spirit shards and pouches, along with an inventory full of raw chicken. Head over to the summoning obelisk and create dead fell pouches until level 16 summoning, when you can make granite crabs. Sell back your pouches to the summoning store after every inventory to make back the money you put into them, allowing you to buy more shards. At level 16 summoning, you'll want to make granite crabs, which require more gold charms, along with iron ore as the secondary ingredient. If you run out of charms, you can obtain more by killing monsters. Many Slayer monsters drop charms, herbs, and seeds, which is why Slayer is such a very important skill to train alongside combat. You can make granite lobsters up until level 28 summoning, which is when you'll want to switch over to green charms and begin to make compost mounds. This is one of the easiest pouches to make, as you can run to the farmer in Taverly carrying all your green charms, shards, and pouches, and buy an inventory of compost, then run back to the obelisk and infuse your pouches. After that, just sell the pouches to the summoning trainer, buy more shards, and repeat the process. Agility is a very easy but slow skill. It can be started in Burthorpe, just east of the Lodestone, Complete the course here until level 35 agility, and then you can start the Barbarian training course, which is very close to the Barbarian outpost, which can be reached by running northwest of Arduin, or by teleporting using a games necklace to the Barbarian outpost. Although you will need to complete the mini quest Bar Crawl so that you can have access to this facility. You'll be training here until level 52, which is when you'll want to move into the Wilderness agility course until level 70, 80, or 85. At 70, if you've completed the Recipe for Disaster quest and have received a Ninja Monkey Grigri, you can train at the Ape whole agility course. Otherwise, you'll want to train at the Barbarian course until level 80 or 85. If you can make Summer Pies, you'll be able to train at the Advanced Gnome Agility course. Otherwise, keep training at the Barbarian course until you've reached 85. At 90 Agility, or 85 with Summer Pies, you can begin on the Barbarian Advanced course until you reach level 99. Agility is a very simple skill, which is why I was able to give you the full 1 to 99 here in this video. Another easy yet slow skill to train is Divination. You can start training Div just southeast of Draenor, or just run directly west of the Lumbridge Lodestone, south of the crater from World Event 1. Divination is a very easy, self-explanatory skill that I won't get too deep into, but just remember to always save enough energy after you reach a new milestone, being 10 or 20 or 3, etc., in order to create a boon for a slight XP increase while training at the next divination location. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of fun to say. As well, you should always collect the Chronicle Fragments that escape randomly from the springs, as this will not only give you a pretty good amount of Hunter XP for catching them, but turning them in when you have 10 or more will net you a good amount of divination experience, increasing your XP per hour. You can turn them in when you have 10 or more in the Lumbridge Divination location. I'll show you on screen now who to turn them into. Also, you can catch up to 30 Chronicles, but it's recommended to turn them in as soon as you have 10, as they're increasingly less common the more you have after 10. Now let's move on to Thieving. Thieving is a fairly easy skill, though can sometimes be tedious. You'll want to start by pickpocketing pompous merchants near the Taverly Lodestone until level 5, which is when you'll want to then start stealing from the bakery stall directly east across the water from the Lodestone. You can bank the food here if you'd like, as the cakes will provide decent food at lower levels and will be great when training agility in the Wilderness Corps or any other course that you are likely to fail and take damage from. At level 26 thieving, you should complete the quest Buyers and Sellers, which is a short 5-minute quest which will allow you access to the Thieving Guild. After you've completed the quest, you will need to complete the Caper from Tiny Acorns, which is a very simple mini-quest. It shouldn't take you more than another 10-15 to 15 minutes. There are video walkthrough guides on YouTube you can use if you'd like to get them done quickly. After you get these two short quests done, you'll be pick-locking the Northern Doors in the Thieving Guild as shown here. Though they do take a while to lock back up, so you'll want to either quick Hop using your friend's chat, or you can do what I did and exit to the lobby and go from one world to the next in ascending or descending order. And then you'll be doing this until level 35 when you can unlock the next set of doors to the south. However, in order to unlock the south set, you'll need at least one lockpick, which I obtained by pickpocketing rogues in the wilderness. However, if you're a hardcore Iron Man account, then this is not a good idea, so it might be better for you to get 36 thieving and complete the second caper, Lost Her Marbles, which will take a little bit longer than the first caper, unfortunately, but will unlock you the shop in the thieving guild where you can buy 
Y lockpick and will get you ready for the next method of training after you've reached the 46 thieving milestone. When you have reached 46 thieving and have not yet completed the second caper, do so along with the quest The Feud, which is a very easy quest, it just might take you a little while, possibly up to an hour at the most. But it rewards you with 15k thieving XP as well as the ability to use blackjacks which will net you the most experience per hour out of this next training method. You will be luring, knocking out, and looting coaching volunteers in the thieving guild as you will see here. First you will want to lure one of the coaching volunteers out into the corridor leading to the entrance of the guild as you see here, then close the door behind him and proceed to lure him, then knock out, and then follow that by looting him. If you hold the spacebar down this whole time, you'll be able to skip through the luring dialogue and be able to knock him out quickly, and then once you've done so, you will obviously want to loot him. Once you get a good technique down, you'll be able to loot him three times before he gets back up, and then you can repeat the process. Now it's a little late for me to mention this, but dungeoneering is a very important skill, as you can train many other skills within it, as well as unlocking things that will aid in many other skills such as scrolls, the charming imp, and chaotic weapons. I won't get too deep into DG as it is a straightforward skill and I'd recommend looking up a guide on YouTube if you're completely in the dark on it, as I'd be here for quite a while explaining to you how to train the skill, and this video is long enough as it is. But like I said, this is one of the most important skills and the first thing you might want to unlock would be a bone crusher, or you may skip over this if you're already 40 or higher prayer from the nexus, if you really care to go ahead and do so, and then you can go ahead and go straight for the charming imp, or perhaps the herbicide scroll which will give you a chance at saving seeds while farming which is going to be very important while training. You can go ahead and check out the other scrolls that are available to you from the rewards in Dungeoneering to see if any of those tickle your fancy. Or tickle your fanny if you're into that. But anyways, that's going to be all for this video. I hope you guys did like it. I tried to touch on every single skill, and I did actually manage to do so. But anyways, if you guys did find this video informative, then please go ahead and leave a like or a comment on this video telling me that you that it did help you guys. And be sure to share it with your other Iron Man friends if it did help you, because I'd like to help as many people as I can. Anyways, like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And until the next video, take care, everyone.